Uh, today is the 30th of April, 2018, and I'm here uh, interviewing Phil Heckler. Hecker. Hecker. No uh, L. Hecker, right. I want to put it Center uh, uh, on uh, Plymouth Road in uh, Ann Arbor. But uh, yeah, there we go. You uh, you now live in Granville? Yes, sir. But you started out in Cleveland. I was born and in that's Cleveland. That's why you have the Cleveland Browns. Right. Cleveland Browns yeah, t shirt. I end up grabbing the wrong shirt, but that's. Oh, that's all right. Uh huh. Uh, how long were you in Cleveland? What? I was born and raised there. I left Cleveland in 1977 and moved to Colorado. Wow, what got you to Colorado? Uh, can't really say, just that place we ended up with my uh, family. And uh, we needed to get out of Cleveland for uh, educational issues with the kids in schools. Oh, uh -huh. And I didn't like what they were doing in the schools at that time, so we decided to leave Cleveland and move west. Mm -hmm. We ended up in Pueblo, Colorado. Why, why Colorado? You know, why not Ann Arbor? I can't, I can't tell you. I don't Connecticut know. Connecticut or something. I really don't know how we ended up there or why. Mm -hmm. It was just where we did, and uh, we lived there. My boys were raised there, went to high school there, graduated and went on to college. And um, How old were you when you moved to Cleveland? When I left I Cleveland? I left Cleveland, I'm sorry. Well, 77, I'd have been 30. Mm -hmm. I was born in 47, so I was 30 years old when we left Cleveland. So you had completed school? I got my GED in Colorado. Oh, you did? Yeah. I had gone to night school in Cleveland under the GI Bill. Uh, I got good grades, but I didn't finish there. We ended up moving to Colorado, and I took my GED there. Uh, they wanted me to go back to class because I've been out of school so long. I said, well, let's take the test and see how I do. Well, I did very well and got my GED mm -hmm. and went on from there. When did you enter service, if you came? To I went into service in 1964, August. Uh huh. And I was stationed at Fort Knox for basic training. Then I went to Fort Polk, Louisiana for AIT. And after I finished that, I went to Fort Benning for permanent party with the, in the 11th Air Assault Division. Uh -huh. And then they brought the colors of the first cab back from Korea in oh. early 65 and I turned 18 that June and left for Vietnam in August of 65 and spent 30 days on board ship going to Vietnam. That long? That long. My worst 30 days of my life. Why? Were you seasick? No, it wasn't seasick. There was just nothing to do on uh -huh. board ship. It was not a passenger ship per se. Uh -huh. uh, and besides, we were mili just military. Mm -hmm. So we really, the only thing we did was calisthenics and play checkers. And we had some sing-alongs on when we could get on deck. You got what? I'm sorry. Sing-alongs. Oh, you did? Yeah. Uh -huh. And we fraternized that way with different people. And then when we arrived in Vietnam, we disembarked the ship just like they did in World War II, down the rope ladder oh, yes. off the side oh, yes. uh -huh. into a uh, duck, uh -huh. and then we proceeded to go ashore. Oh, is that how you went ashore? Yeah, oh, and goodness. they dropped the tailgate, and I walk out, and I'm looking around the country, and I drove in a convoy up to our base camp, uh -huh. and I was in helicopter maintenance. In supply. Oh, you were in, you, oh, okay. I was in the 11th Air Assault Division, Company D, uh -huh. of the 1st Cavalry Division. 
you were maintenance for the helicopter? Maintenance and supply for yeah. repair parts and mechanics for the helicopter. We had the major heliport in South Vietnam mm -hmm. was based around. Did, did you did you have to go out and, and evaluate whether copters were? No, they would bring them back in on uh, sky hooks uh -huh. and drop them off at the heliport. I did do some field work over there with our first sergeant. When we found out we were going to Vietnam, he put in for retirement because he didn't want to go to Vietnam. It didn't work out. He went anyway. Uh -huh. But when he got his replacement in, he ended up doing PR work with the local villages. Uh -huh. And I ended up being his duty driver. So we would go to various villages and treat minor injuries of the locals and then come back to our base camp that night. And we did this, oh, I'm not sure how long, but the better part of my tour. Mm -hmm. I didn't see combat per se, which doesn't break my heart. <laughs> I lost a lot of friends. Did you? Mm -hmm. Yeah, from my high school. And. Uh, I have a rubbing from one of my friends in my book at home. Oh, you do? Yeah. Because he was, he was killed in, on duty in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. How old was he after? 18. He had to be 18 to go. Yeah. So most of the younger guys were bare minimum of age. I turned 18 in June and left for Vietnam in August. So it's only two months past legal age to go into a combat zone. You, you turned 18 in June? Right. End of June. My birthday is June 29th. And we left for uh, Vietnam middle of August, first part of August. I'm not sure exact date. I don't remember. Like I say, we spent, from the time we left to the time we arrived was 30 days, and we had one day of shore leave at Pearl. At Pearl Harbor? Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. And all I did was walk around and then went back to the ship. You didn't get to see any, much of any? No, no we didn't have time to uh, actually get out and, you know, visit anything. Although I would have loved to have seen some of the sites over there, I didn't get to see them. My wife, well, my family's been to Oahu. My daughter's been to Hawaii several times, but uh, we loved Oahu. We also went to uh, Maui, but Maui was Maui. We always said was Hilton Head West. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm sure it was commercialized pretty bad, even at that time frame. Mm -hmm. I had an aunt and uncle who moved to Hawaii and lived there oh, yeah. for a while, and they complained about everything that they bought had a premium price because everything except pineapple had yeah. to be shipped in. Absolutely. They didn't grow anything else but pineapple. No. So all the food stuff they had to come in by plane or boat. Uh, did they get so-called island fever or whatever they call it? Uh, they didn't say. Hmm. That's, that's a fairly common complaint. Yeah. People who go there and are not native, you know. Right, they're not used to being cooped up into a small island. radius of land or area. Yeah. 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 I'm sure I would like to go back and visit, and we still hope to do that at one Hawaii time. Hawaii or, or Vietnam? <laughs> no, no, not Vietnam. I really don't want to go back there. My memories are not real fond, no. but they're not real bad either. Um, many of the people that I've interviewed have said that they've gone back to Vietnam and they just love that the people are well, great. We, we built a church when we were there in our area. We men from my company got together and we built a church for a long time people there. Uh -huh. And I have slides that show some of the work. Because we had, we had 
two ringer washing machines that somebody donated to us, and we did laundry for a lot of different people outside of our area, because most of the time, if you had laundry done, it was done by a local at the river. Mm -hmm. And that was the same place we got our water. They would treat the water and bring it back in bladders to the company areas, and you would unload it into standing containers of sorts. Is that where you got your drinking water, too? Mm -hmm. oh my. So you think about what the river was used for, and you'll understand exactly why we're not real fond of no. how they got the water. Uh, no uh, uh, treating of the water? Or? They treated it, but I'm not sure how. They did it exactly. It was not something they took us on tour to show us. Yeah. But I can't believe they didn't treat the water. No, I don't think so. Uh, they, they had, I was in sort of the Lister bags. Yeah. Lister bags. Lister. Yeah. yeah. And, and we had, we, with, it came in, it came in a, like a three quarter ton trailer with a big bladder. Mm -hmm. And you emptied that to fill your various containers throughout the company area, your lister bags, which were hung up in trees, mm -hmm. and dispense the water into your canteen or whatever you were using it for. We, like I said, we had a, a wash a wash house for washing clothes. We had a shower mm -hmm. that we built out of a helicopter engine container. <laughs> what? And they put immersion heaters in it to heat the water. And we got a, a chance to take a shower once a week, although in the rainy season it didn't matter. You were, there was only two climates in Vietnam, hot and wet and hot and dry. Mm -hmm. So there was no in between. So those are what memories that stick mm -hmm. in my mind a lot. And the fact we had to take malaria pills every Monday morning and then all the rest of the day of Monday and Tuesday, everybody that lined up at the outhouses with diarrhea. Because of the malaria pills, right. Why would you have to take malaria pills every week? They, what they were giving at that time had to be done over and over. It was not something you did once and didn't have to worry about it. Well, I've, I've never been in a malaria zone so I don't really well, know. I, I don't know how they came up with that mm -hmm. plan of attack or what have you but and we had a PX within probably a half mile of my company area mm -hmm. that we could walk to. Where was your base camp? Just outside of NK is where the cab first set up. They named it I don't remember what it was but they named the camp I don't know. I'm sure I've got it written down someplace of what the name of the camp was. Mm -hmm. I remember my address because I couldn't find it and I found it on a three by five card I had put away in my file. And it lists my APO address mm -hmm. in Vietnam along with my company designation and what have you. So. Um. Were you anywhere near a, a big city? Or Quignan was the closest major city. How, how big a city was that? Uh, about half the size of Saigon. Saigon was the major city in South Vietnam, mm -hmm. and that was the largest city, and then Quignan was where all the ships came in. So it was on the, board, it was on the uh, coast? Yeah. Um, How big is, you say it was half the size of Saigon? Yeah, Saigon was a major city in South Vietnam. That was the capital city of South Vietnam. Yeah, at that time. Right. Uh, it doesn't say how, how big was Saigon. I really can't. I was only there once. Well, but what was the, the, the population of your city? I really don't know. The, the village we were near had a barber shop, a store, um, some other things. Not that I would ever get my hair cut. I was more worried about getting my throat cut. What was that, right? Yeah. Why? 
Did well, they, did they like the GIs or they felt they put on two faces, uh -huh. good and bad. When they had sent a suicide squad into our area to destroy our communications network, which was located on top of a mountain called Hong Kong Mountain, mm -hmm. which was the closest high point to our division and battalion area. And they sent a suicide squad in, oh, probably four or five months after we arrived, and they were all killed trying to get into the area. And when they identified them, they were all local businessmen from NK. Oh. They, they never got in the base, you mean? No. One guy got through, and they found them the next day. What were they? Suicide? And they, were they were just like locals. Bombs. They were trying to destroy the communications center of South Vietnam. Mm -hmm. That was our lifeline to... Did, did, were there GIs who went to this town and got roughed up? or No, they treated us fairly decent in town. You know, as far as that goes, but you were never there after dark. Uh -huh. uh, you would go with, and you always went with as a group because it was not safe to go by yourself. So if you couldn't help, you know, a bunch of people go together, you didn't go. Mm -hmm. I don't remember, you know, all the details about the town, other than you know the guys that they got at the suicide squad when they did mm -hmm. identify them, they were all local merchant owners in NK. Merchant owners, they weren't just... No, they were not regular North Vietnamese regulars or anything like that. They were just, because uh, they had the VC and you had Arvin and you had uh, regular soldiers that were North Vietnamese. Yeah. But the MDA was the North Vietnamese Army and Gooks VC were just indoctrinated into like rebel mm -hmm. groups so it was just a matter of when whether or not they were going to hit us and when and they only tried once and they didn't succeed and they they never tried to get them while i was there and you were there 65 through april of 66 is when i left to come home okay you weren't there when tap yeah, no, I mean, when the, we abandoned the Saigon and no, everything else. that was in the 70s. I was already home. Oh, was it in the 70s? I yeah. thought it was earlier than that. No. When they uh, just cleared out of Saigon, it was in the early to mid-70s, mm -hmm. 72 to 75, somewhere in that time frame, mm -hmm. is when they basically left out of the country. Yeah. And I was already home by probably six, eight years by then. I, I meant to ask you, were you drafted or did you? I enlisted. You enlisted. I couldn't find work. Mm -hmm. uh, and I was having difficulties with my dad at home because I couldn't find a job. And uh, Was he putting pressure on you to find work? Or? Oh, yeah. We had a large family. I have five brothers and sisters, all mm -hmm. younger. Oh, I'm so the oldest the of oldest six. Of, of ten? Six. Six? Yeah. My mom didn't work. She stayed. She was a stay-at-home mom. Uh -huh. So my dad worked. He even worked during his vacation. He never took a vacation. He would bank his hours and what? get a, a check and not not take the vacation. What did What did he do? He worked for a printing company. Uh -huh. He was a multicolor press pressman. He was offered a foreman position. He didn't want it. Why not? He wasn't that kind of person. He was not a leader. He didn't like the responsibility. Right. That's why he turned it down. Uh -huh. So you you had difficulty finding anything in Cleveland. Right. So you joined up for, and what was it at that time? Was three, it three years. Three years? But I got an early discharge. Well, that's what I was going to ask you. Due to some other issues. 
the, there was a, a time there when they were offering people uh, an early discharge. Uh, yeah, they were offering other optional discharges under honorary uh -huh. conditions, uh -huh. which is what I got. I got what they classified as general discharge mm -hmm. under honorable conditions. So mm -hmm. I lost no benefits, and the only thing I did is I got out of the service early. Mm -hmm. What rank did you hold at that time? Uh, my highest rank was an E3. Okay. When I came out, I was an E1 because I told the, my commanding officer I came in an E1, I can go out the same way. <laughs> he didn't like my answer. Oh, okay. So. He took my strikes away. So he made sure you went out as a new one. And I wouldn't change my mind today under the circumstances. If I was faced with the same circumstances as I was at that time, I would give him the same answer. Mm -hmm. Maybe a little bit more than what I did then. Then I was polite. Oh. Now I might not be polite oh. because I know more about the reasons. The reasons for things that happen. Military wanted you to be military. Mm -hmm. They didn't care about your family. The only thing they cared for you is, is for you to do a job. And they, but they wouldn't let you do the job. They would constantly. Um, I, I really don't want to put this out in writing. Mm -hmm some of those things. But there were, there were things that happened that uh, were not fair to me, mm -hmm. and I reacted accordingly. So I got an early discharge because of How, how early? Well, I figured I got out in 66, so I was not due to get out till 67, so I got out about a year early. A year early. Uh -huh. yeah. Go back to Cleveland? Yeah, I went back to Cleveland. I didn't tell my family I was coming home until I arrived in California. Mm -hmm. Because anybody who was flying out of Vietnam at that time had to worry about getting the airfield mortared by Vietnamese regulars. They would look and watch for planes disembarking and they would mortar the plane mm -hmm. and they were killing troops. Who were, who were on their way home? Who were on their way home. And I was afraid that if I told my family I was coming home, that something may have happened at the airport. So I didn't tell them until mm -hmm. I got to California. And when I got to California, they gave me a reenlistment talk. Oh. And I just sat there and laughed. You mean you didn't reenlist? <laughs> no. <laughs> but even then, I thought about going back in. You did? Yeah. Because work was very hard. Especially if you served in the military. At that time, uh, Vietnam vets were not treated well. That's for sure. Yeah. And had certain things that happened to some friends, happened to me, I would probably went to jail. Because I didn't think it was right what they did. <laughs> what, what? Well, they would spit on us, oh, mm -hmm. things like that. Now, how would you feel if somebody spit on you? Not very well. Uh, I uh, I knew uh, L.C. who uh, retired, went to uh, Eastern at the time when uh, campuses were in an uproar. Mm hmm Over Vietnam. Yeah, and uh, they were brutal. They called him baby killer. Mm hmm They spit at him. Well, they did a lot of things. And I, I don't know how he... That was a hippie era. I mean, yeah. you imagine coming home to that yeah. when you never saw any of it before you went, yeah. but you come home to see guys with hair down to their butt, and then you, you see them from the front and you got a beard. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I just sat and shook my head. But I didn't come home in uniform. I came home in civilian clothes because I did not want to be grouped with military at that time. And I, I've heard people tell me that they said they were told as soon as they got to California, take that uniform off. You know? Yeah. It was not a good thing to be at that time. 
You know, all of the, all the people that I've interviewed, there's only one person that I know of that didn't get, that didn't worry about being mistreated when he got home. Really? Yeah. I, was he of any rank, or? I mean, he wasn't. He wasn't a commissioned officer. That's for sure. He wasn't. No. Okay, so he was in. He was basically a non-com or lower. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But he. He wasn't. He said he didn't get treated badly. And well, it might have been where he lived too. I don't know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, I know when people found out where I served, jobs that I thought I had, I didn't get. Because you were from. I was a, v- a veteran from Vietnam, and you, if you put that on your application, mm-hmm. more times than not, you would never get a call back. So that made it even more difficult yeah. to find work. What did you finally do? I mean, how did you find? I was a machinist. I worked in a, in a machine shop, rebuilding engines from old cars. Uh, Model T's, Model A's. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. And if the block had a crack in it, you you sleeved it if it was in decent enough shape. And that's what I did. You you repaired blocks? I repaired engines, flywheels, brake drums. Uh, We rebuilt, we did heads. Mm -hmm. We did, you know, all kinds of stuff. Where'd you get your knowledge about all that stuff? I was self-taught mostly at mm-hmm. that time. And then after I got out, I went into an apprenticeship program for automotive. Oh, for but I learned, before that, I learned on my own mm-hmm. because that's what I wanted to do. You said you used your GI Bill. To go to night school, yes. And I carried a B plus average in night school. We were better than my average. Well, I, the only reason I stopped going then was just the fact of economics. Mm-hmm. I needed to work to support a family. Mm-hmm. You were married then? Yeah. I got married October 64. Not to this young lady. Oh, no? She and I have been married uh, 36 years now. But my first wife is deceased. We divorced um, a long time ago, mm-hmm. and she has sim- since passed on. Mm-hmm. Did you have any children by, oh, yeah. by that marriage? Mm-hmm. I have all boys. My oldest one is a physics engineer. My second oldest is a, a psychologist. Oh, yeah. Where? Um, he works in Pueblo at the hospital. And my oldest works for Texas Instruments. So you have three boys? And then my next oldest son works for Workers' Comp in Kansas. He's got a teaching certificate, but he's never used it. Mm-hmm. So you had just, a th- not just, but you had three boys. Yeah, I raised four, but I only had three. And then she and I have a girl who is a mother of three. Oh, my. So that's part of the reason why we moved up to Granville, was to be closer to our grandkids. Did, had they been, oh, you said Granville, okay. Right. Uh, were you in, in, in um, Colorado at that time when you had the children, when you were doing your... No, the boys were all born in, Phil Jr. was born in Georgia at the Army Hospital. Oh, that was good. Uh, the second one was born in Cleveland. The third one was born in Cleveland. I'm not sure where Justin was born. Not Colorado. Justin was out. So you were married when you were in service then? Yeah, I was, I was 17 when I got married. Not, not something I should have done, but something I did. So you were married even before you went into service? No, I went into service and got married uh, within two months after I went in. Oh, uh uh-huh. I went in August and got married in October of 64. That was your first wife? Right. 
And you say now you're married to this young lady. Yeah. And we've been we've been together. Thirty six. Married thirty six. Five. Thirty five. We've been together thirty six. Thirty five years. What year was that? We got married in eighty three. Eighty three. Oh, okay. So you, you say you went to um, Colorado because of you wanted the, the kids to have a better education? Uh, I didn't like what they were doing with the school system in Cleveland. They were busing kids from one side of town to other to balance racial numbers. Mm -hmm. And I didn't agree to that. I moved to a certain area so my kids could go to school at that area not be bused across town because the politicians wanted a balance of... Were they, were they due to be bused? I'm sorry? Were your kids due to be bused? They would have been, yes. That's the main reason that plus uh, my first wife and I were having issues and we thought it was a good way to get another start. So that's part of, there was a couple of reasons why we left. Mm -hmm. But busing was one for the kids, and the other was because we had family problems that we needed to leave behind, mm -hmm. family interference. And it worked for a while. Yeah, sure. Until it didn't. Yeah. What got you back to Michigan? I met this, I was managing a bowling center, and she came in to bowl, and she got hooked up with my team, and that's how we met. Where was the bowling alley? Was it? it was, uh, the parent company was Brunswick Corporation. But was it in Colorado? Yeah. Oh, uh -huh. It was a suburb of Denver called Aurora, uh -huh. which is where we met. And, and, and what were you doing besides bowling in Colorado? I moved out with a company that I had worked for in Michigan. And they transferred me out there. Uh -huh. What company was that? Uh, KMS Industries is the main company out of Ann Arbor. I'm, they're not around anymore. Oh. But they moved me out there. And so is that we, how you got back here? Well, he uh, was difficulty with work. And I'm from Michigan. And so he opted to come back here and see if we could find work better for him. Did you? Yes. She retired from the University of Michigan with 30 years. It's supposed oh, to be a yeah. temporary move. <laughs> yeah, we were hoping to go back to Colorado. We never did. Uh -huh. You were 30 years at that year? Almost 31. And I just retired last year. Doing? I was a financial manager for uh -huh. one of the hospital departments. In the hospital? Wow. Yep. Came back and finished my schooling. I also and, worked at U of M yeah. until I hurt my back. What did you do with the U? I was with the movers. Movers? Mm hmm. Okay. Anything anybody else didn't want to move, we moved. Didn't matter how big, how small. Uh -huh. I enjoyed it until I got hurt. How'd you get hurt? Um, a gentleman that was working with me. We had a problem on some stairs, and I got my back twisted. And so did you retire from the U, or did you, was it just you quit? Or Separate. Workers' comp Separate. 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 Uh -huh. The benefits for, for retirement are great. Yes, but they're changing things over I the know, years, but too. But I came in in the time that I got Right. Yeah. yeah. My wife retired from the U, and uh, the benefits, as I say, are great. Yep. For yeah. Yeah, depending on when you started. Yeah. Yeah. Pre, pre when you started, if you yeah. started later in life or more yeah. recent, they changed their benefit package. Oh yeah, they have. Pre eighty yeah. five, I think it is. Yeah, my my daughter, for example, has worked there for twenty years, and I don't think she got the benefits. Mm -hmm. yet. Yeah. I don't think she's entitled to the benefits right. that my wife got. Right. Yeah. Pre-85 is different than 
Yeah. 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 Still really good benefits, though. Yeah, but, really. not, but not what I want left with. I've been medically retired since... About 15 years. About 15 years ago. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, Due to Agent Orange. Agent Orange issues from Vietnam. Oh yeah. What 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 did they uh, say you were affected by? A, uh, Agent Orange. I became a diabetic. I have uh, some other skin issues that were caused by being in the area where they sprayed this garbage. Were you in the area? Yeah. Any place that was highly foliaged, which is almost anywhere you yeah, went. Right. The only reason we didn't have it is because we built a heliport. But they had to clear that before. And they used Agent Orange. And when you, you got home and then you found out over the years they finally admitted to the fact that Agent Orange caused health problems for the vets. Yeah, I, I interviewed uh a guy who uh, was getting all sorts of problems from Agent Orange, including... Yeah, different people different. were affected different ways. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have, you know, I had a heart attack, I've had um, diabetes, um, some other issues that are progressively mm -hmm. getting worse by eight, as I get older. And I lost a lot of friends since I've been home. Out of the chapter that died basically from Agent Orange mm -hmm. items, which they have a list of presumptive diseases that were caused by Agent Orange exposure. When you were here in Ann Arbor, is that when you joined BVA? I was, yeah. My neighbor was uh, a vet and he heard about them forming a chapter mm -hmm. and he asked me, he knew I was a vet, so he asked me if I would be interested in Those were in the early, early years of DVA. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I'm not, uh, um, I'm 86. 86. But yeah, I'm one of the charter members of the chapter. Mm -hmm. I was with the first group that joined to, so we could get our charter. You were with John? Yeah, John Kay and Doc Martinez and a whole bunch of others that have been around for virtually forever. Mm -hmm. I've been president. Yes. I was the treasurer for about 10 years. Almost oh, 10 about years 10 plus. Years. I took care of all the books and taxes, etc., etc. John asked me when he left office, he asked me to become president and I was not interested at that time. Those were not my aspirations to become my president of the VVA. But I did end up serving two years as president. Oh, is that right? Yeah. What years were those, uh, Phil? One of them was recently. 2014, 2015, because you went out in 2006. 2013 or 14, I think. Doc did 15, yeah, 13 or 14, I think. The years I was president. Mm -hmm. And I gave up the treasurer just a year before. Well, I'm just going to have been in the right, right. treasurer into president. Mm -hmm. for but treasurers. I was uh, president of the commander of the American Legion in Saline. Mm -hmm. Or in, yeah, yeah Saline. Uh, I was county council. All three offices there going up to commander. American League. The VFW is the only one that yeah. I never went for any office there. You weren't in the VFW? I belong oh. to the VFW. I'm a life member in all my veterans groups. Mm -hmm. DAV, VFW, American Legion, and 310. I'm a life member. Well, as I say, they, they wouldn't let me join the VVA. Uh, I mean the AVVA. <laughs> it has to do with where you're at. Yeah. It has to do with dates. Yeah. So, but anyway, that's how I met John when we first got together, you know, to form the chapter. And then John would, uh, I was in active for a while due to the work schedule. Right, worked afternoons. I worked afternoons and couldn't make meetings, and John was bugging me about 
coming back, you know, becoming more active. Were you working at the U at that time? Uh, yeah, and then I was also running a pro shop in a bowling alley at night. Oh, which bowling alley? Uh, Maplewood and Celine. Oh, yeah. I ran the pro shop there for a few years. Um, did you did you live in Celine? Mm-hmm. We lived in Clinton, and then we moved into Celine when my daughter started driving because we didn't like the fact of what she was going to face in traffic driving back and forth from Clinton. So we rented a place on South Ann Arbor Street for a couple of years. And then we bought a place and we moved out there and we were there for 15, 16 years. And we sold that a couple, a little over a year ago and moved up to Granville where we bought a condo. Well, I wish I had thought of that because we would have made it a lot easier. I could have yeah. reserved a room in the library and so on. <laughs> but they wouldn't, they wouldn't let me because I'm not a resident and, you know, uh, I didn't, I told them too, my, my daughter lives in Celine, but no, it's mm. not good enough. <laughs> yeah, we sold our house a year ago. Yeah. yeah. We were very fortunate. We didn't even list it on the market and we sold it. Houses still sell like crazy in yep. this area. So we bought a place up in Granville, and that's where we moved a year ago, December, January. January, yeah, December, January. We've been up there almost a year and a half now. Yeah. In Granville, and we're like 15 minutes away from our daughter. Is that where right? Where she lives, so uh -huh. we get to visit with them almost any time we want. With your grandkids? Yeah, with our grandkids. Mm -hmm. Ages five, seven, and nine. Five, seven, and nine. Okay. Right. I have I have five grandkids, but I also have two great grandkids. I have no great grandchildren yet, mm -hmm. thank goodness. Mm -hmm. Although I have a grandson who's old enough to have kids. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. He's not married yet. But uh my daughter is happy that we're close because we didn't get to visit all that much before we moved up here. Oh, is that right? Uh -huh. But now she gets to stop over at will. <laughs> Drop the kids off and say, see you later. <laughs> yeah, right. There you go. So, we have both. Great, great, great babysitters. Well, I have more than those three. Uh -huh. I think I've got about 13 all told. I don't know. We don't see all of them. Thirteen grandkids. grandkids. Yeah, no great grandchildren, no, oh. not oh. yet. Well, you beat me on that count. I wasn't trying to beat you, so. No, I <laughs> didn't. Um, that's that's great. But are they all around here? No. Oh. Uh, Texas, Colorado, Kansas. We're in Texas. Dallas area. Dallas. Yes. Oh, uh huh. I have a granddaughter down there. In Pueblo, I've got, I'm not sure no. how many and what no, their sexes are. Mm -hmm. Relationships not there. Yeah. Then I have a son in Kansas that has two, a boy and a girl. Mm -hmm. That's my oldest grandson. He's 23. My military career was spent in San Antonio. Oh. Uh, Fort Sam, Brook Army Medical Center. I know of it. I haven't every, been there. Every day of my military career was there. <laughs> when my wife and I were uh, went down there, we said, geez, you know, we were there. We said, Maybe we ought to try and visit Mexico or you know, try and visit some of the other places. And, and then after four weeks, I was permanently assigned there. So. We never went anywhere. <laughs> Did you like it down there, though? No. No? Too hot? Too humid? It was... The weather wasn't bad except for July. July, maybe August. The bugs were unbelievable. The cockroaches were unbelievable. 
Yeah, I saw some big ones in Georgia, too. Oh, you didn't see any big ones until you went to Texas. Oh. Well, everything's bigger in Texas. Absolutely. <laughs> Absolutely. Everything. Is. Yeah, I, I saw some down in Georgia where we ran it at home, and they were inch and a half, two inches long. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's big. Yeah. When I grew up, I saw these little things. Yeah, the we were there, and they used to say, well, it's you military people that bring them in. Ah, like <laughs> baloney. <laughs> baloney, really. Yeah. They get where they want to get. Yeah. They don't need your help to do yeah. it. The first apartment we had in San Antonio was so immaculate, you could eat off the floor. It was beautiful during the day. At night, oh my God. Mm. Bugs. You didn't want to get up and walk around without putting the light on? Oh, no. That's one bug I cannot stand is a cockroach. Oh. Any other bug doesn't really bother me, but those I can't, I cringe and mm. just shudder if I get near, near any. Mm. So, my first wife's parents had a bad near house. And I put my coat on one day and one crawled around my neck and I went to the earth. I just flipped. <laughs> I don't blame you. I don't blame you. That's one bug I cannot be around. Uh, well, is there anything else that I need to know about you, Phil? No, I, I, I had some decent times in Vietnam. I didn't see combat, so that was good. Uh, I did lose a lot of friends over there. Yeah. That When I came home, the 4th of July after I got home, they did a two-page spread in the local paper of all the local men that had been killed in Nam. And I went through my school, and I was looking at the names, and I just started crying. All the people I played football with in high school, mm -hmm. only two of us came home alive. Wow. And only one could walk. That was me. Mm -hmm. So it didn't sit well. Mm -hmm. I tried to make contact with this one buddy, family, just to give him my condolences. And his family yelled at me like it was my fault. Mm -hmm. So I have not tried to connect with anybody mm -hmm. else. Yeah. It took a while before, you know, Vietnam, we got past the bat. Now, you know, people thank us for our service. Yes. Back right. then, you could get shot even you could get thanked. Well, you know the trouble that VVA had in getting the memorial mm -hmm. oh, yeah. in Ann Arbor, my God. Mm -hmm. The first time I went to see it, it took me 40 minutes across the field and get to it. And that's where the moving wall And that was the traveling wall. Right. And one of the guys came out and met me and stood there with me. But that's the one in, wa in Washington. Yeah. No, I didn't I hadn't gotten oh. to Washington. This is at Willow Run when the traveling wall came through. Oh, is that right? Yeah. Well, I'm sure you were. And I went to the one in D.C. now. Yeah, we've been there A couple of times. times. Uh -huh. I've read names in yeah. D.C. But you know the difficulty that VDA had in getting the one in Ann Arbor. Oh, yeah. The, the, the Arbor. local. Yep. Yep. I, I came here in 77. I could not understand what the hell was going on. Yep. Yeah. Why were they turning it down? Can't the V can't yep. get into the Veterans Park? What kind of yeah. nonsense is this? Right. It's called Veterans Park. I know. Yeah. Yeah. But not the Vietnam Vets. Yeah. No, we had trouble. Yeah, sure. Big did. trouble. Yeah. John Kane and a couple of other guys fought and fought and fought and finally got uh, MC Township. Yeah, yeah. Plays them. And we got a you. we got a 99 year lease that automatically renewed. Yeah. For yeah. a buck. Yeah. yeah. It's a beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, mm -hmm. memorial is great. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. But it took a while to get into that. Yes, they did. The reason I ask you if there's anything else you, you know, I need to know is that, you know, I interviewed Charlie Kittles, you know, Charlie mm -hmm. Kittles, and I, I was wrapping it up 
And his wife said, well, did you tell him anything about, I've forgotten the date, March 26th or something, whatever. And he told me, and I just, I was in, I couldn't believe what he had done at that time. It was unbelievable. And he only got a silver star for it. Aretha. He, he well, got a an honor. Yes. Medal of Honor he just got. Um, yeah. Took four and a half years for us to get that part. He shouldn't have had to wait that long to get it. No, he shouldn't. He should have he should have gotten it right away. But I remember when after I finished talking with him, you know, I asked him, I said, hey, yeah, do you mind if I try to see if I can do anything about getting this upgrade? And he said, No, that's okay, go ahead. And I thought, gee, you know, no no problem at all. Just write a letter and it'll be approved. <laughs> There is no such thing as just write a letter. No. Just write a letter and follow up and harp and harp and harp to get okay. stuff done. As time. I say, it took us four and a half years. And, uh, uh, Debbie Gingles' uh, staff was absolutely fantastic. They did a fantastic job. Um, I keep saying one of the things that they, one of the things that they did was keeping me controlled, you know, so I didn't go off half cock, because I was ready to do, you know, I was, oh, ready, I'm sure. I was ready to write to the president. I said, how about if I write, you know, I'll yeah, write to we, we all have things we wish didn't happen. I wish Vietnam never happened. Yeah. I wish I didn't have to go. Yeah. That is not where I wanted to go. I was guaranteed what training I was going to get and where I could be stationed, mm -hmm. and it didn't happen. Mm -hmm. They lied to us. Now, if they tell you something about a base you can go to, you'll go. Right. Because they have to put it in writing now. Back then, they would tell you whatever sure. to get you to sign up, Probably and then, bye, you're done. Yeah. It doesn't matter what they said to you. Yeah. You're never going to see it. Right. And that's part of the reason why I have so much difficulty with the military. Mm -hmm. I had envisioned going in and retiring with 20 years, but that didn't last long. Well, you're better than me, better than, better mind than, man than I am, Gunga Dan. <laughs> um, I had no intention of making it a career. Well, originally I had discussed it and thought about it. And like I said, then the real life set in and all the things that were promised were reneged on and uh, we yeah. were not treated well by even our commanders. Yeah. In many even ways, if I knew the names, I wouldn't say them. Yeah. In many ways, um, I really uh, need to thank the military for First of all, my wife was with me every day in my military career. That's great. My daughter was born in a military hospital, and she was in an isolate for three weeks. So, you know, that cost us, I think. They, they would charge you for the, My wife was charged for her meals, and I don't know what that was, $17 a day or I don't know. But then when she left, you know, I figured you know, they're going to charge me f for my daughter too. But all they did was the same, same rate for my daughter too. And she was in an isolate for three weeks. Mm -hmm. Imagine what that would have cost me. Yeah, I, I, my son, my oldest was born at, I think it was Martin Army Hospital at, at Fort Benning. Uh -huh. The same day that Powell's daughter was born. Colin Powell. Colin Powell. His daughter was born on the same day at the same hospital. So that stuck in my mind. Uh, but the cost was maybe five bucks at mm -hmm. that time. Is what it cost me. I'm not sure what they charged me for. It wasn't much. But they wouldn't even let me in the hospital. They kept throwing me out. I was trying to stay there with my wife and they wouldn't let me in. I'd go in one door and they'd throw me out another. They told you to go home. Mm. I didn't want to go home. I wanted to stay with my family. They wouldn't let me. 
They threatened me if I went back in again, they were going to put me in a stockade. Oh. Well, the difference was that the uh, person who was head of uh, obstetrics at that time felt that the uh, staff should have special privileges. So all the staff wives who were pregnant at the time got, number one, their own doctor. Hmm. And number two, got private rooms when they were wow. in there. And I was the lowest of the low. <laughs> when, when my wife delivered, I was a second lieutenant. And boy, I tell you, there's nothing lower than a second That's lieutenant. That's right. Nothing. <laughs> you're, you're a rug. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And um, my wife had her own room. Um, she had, uh, you know, people making her bed. There were captains and majors' wives who were in a six-bedroom ward, ward, six, yeah, six-bed ward, and they had to do their own bed. <laughs> and uh, you know, it was it was unbelievable. Uh, you know, you had an awakening when you went into the military. Yeah. You can believe whatever you want before you go, but I guarantee you'll change your mind yeah. real short. I had a second lieutenant for a company commander who was determined to get his first lieutenant bars at our expense. And he did. Oh. And we paid for it. And I'll let that go right there. Okay. <laughs> I don't know. Did he not know that there's nothing much you can do not to get a second, a first, a first lieutenant bar? All you have to do, or at least when I was in service, all you had to do was survive 18 months, not get in trouble, and you got your bar. Yeah. Well, he was going to get it at his rate, at his speed. And we were going to pay for it. Oh. And we did with sweat, blood sometimes, and tears. Oh, my. That's too bad. We were not allowed to walk once we came out of our village store. We had to run everywhere. Oh. If you got caught walking in the company area, 50 push-ups now. Then you had to get up and do something else. Mm. Well, it just depends on what he had on his mind that day. Yeah, yeah. What he ate. <laughs> You know, he was he was this typical PR. Oh. I will not <clears throat> finish the word. Okay. All right. All right, sir. I appreciate. I I appreciate you coming down, Phil. And I know. This, I'm sorry uh, that it took so long. Listen, I know, and uh, I, I appreciate it. We yeah. appreciate what you did. And what I'm going to do is this is going to be converted into DVDs. DVD goes to Library of Congress and to our local website, and you get as many or as few as you want. Well, I would like a couple. Well, let me tell you, I have had requests for two and as many as 22. Wow. So if you go in between those two, you're okay. Well, I want one, I want one for my daughter, and the, the boys, well, I might want three then. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Is that what you want? Right now, yeah. yeah. Well, you tell me, okay? Yeah, I will. And uh, I appreciate yeah. what you've done with this. Oh, this is fabulous. Because I didn't really want to talk about Vietnam. There's things she still hasn't heard. And we've been married a long time. Yeah. But even now, there's been times when she'll say, you never said that before. <laughs> I didn't hear that before. Because it's out of sight, out of mind. We don't, we don't talk about it much. He didn't open up really until they got inactive with the chapter. Yeah. And then I would just sit in the background and listen to him and the guys talk. Mm -hmm. That's good. Well, I can. Thank you very much. And again, it was great meeting you. And I. The pleasure. I remember you some. I was part of AVVA when you were president, by the way. I imagine. Yes. I know the name. I couldn't place your face, yeah. but.